So, good morning to everyone here. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Carlene Ross, and I was asked to come speak with you today to share the two different aspects of my career. On one side, like Adrian said, I am a coach that empowers my clients to become the experts in themselves. And what this does is it allows them to stand true into who they are, where they no longer need to turn to the outside world to get direction of how they should think, feel, or act. On the other side of my career, I'm also an international wildlife artist um, that has a strong focus in representing artwork that is focused on the sea turtle. My artwork has represented Canada across the globe. It has been international um, art exhibitions in, into Europe as well as across North America. It has been represented in the Robert Bateman Foundation calendar for the past four years and I have had reproductions and originals sold all over the world. Along with um, my artwork, I have also written and published a book titled Journey to the Sea Turtle. I chose to write this book to share with others um, how much these animals mean to us. I truly believe that the artwork I create is to have a wider reach than just me personally. When I wrote this book, it was after seeing how people treated these endangered animals, and I thought that it is possible that they might pick up an art book and actually be inspired to care more about these animals than just look at artwork that makes it look pretty. My art, my book, is a combination of all that I am. It tells the story of the sea turtle and the conservation groups that I work with, what is so important about these animals from a perspective of an artist, as well as it shares inspirational messages to try and empower people to become better for themselves and the world around them. These messages ultimately are messages of hope and awareness. No matter where I am, I highlight both aspects of these. They are extremely fundamental in creating who I am, what I stand for, and what I hold true in this world. I'm a firm believer that we need to collect all of our aspects into one place. Because once we collect who and what we are in all parts of our lives, we can actually stand stress-free and more confident in who and what we are. For myself, when I collected all of these parts into one place and started to express them proudly to everyone that I have ever met, I become unapologetic for everything that I am, everything that I am trained to do, and everything that I am capable of. When others, I have had others tell me that I'm too complex to describe because I do too many different things. Can't I just be an artist? And what I think is it's absolutely fantastic that they said that to me. Because what that means is I haven't limited who I am to fit into their category of who I should show up to be. As people, we compare ourselves and we rank our worthiness based on others around us. So we all, I'm sure, know that this is called social comparison. And in the past, this was considered extremely valuable because People saw this as a way for us to try and improve ourselves, see where we need to grow. But what science is actually showing us is that it is extremely detrimental. And the reason why we need to pay attention to this with being creatives is social comparison a lot of times will let us feel lesser, it'll increase dep depression as well as anxiety. When we fall into this, we actually become less creative. We need joy and happiness to inspire ourselves to actually be more creative. So our balance of joy and our creative abilities are actually completely correlated. When social, compares, um, sorry, when social comparison <coughs> first was thought it was extremely valuable, it's when we were comparing ourselves to 50 to maybe 200 people. This is before internet. This is before we had thousands of people to compare ourselves to. The realism of this is we possibly, we cannot compare ourselves to everybody we see on social media. And all of us also need to realize too that half the stuff that gets put on social media is actually just biased towards the positive of the people's lives versus actually showing all aspects of it. Social comparison also puts us in a place of judgment. It puts us whether we see ourselves as lesser 
or we see ourselves better than others. For myself, I really realized within my own business and my own artwork, I didn't want to be in that place of comparison. So I decided to take a step back and really decide what I wanted my artwork to be about. In the business world, they look at this as a little bit of your mission statement. So my statement became, I wanted to bring in more hope, more inner reflection and awareness to others in the world. And it is from this statement that I create both my artwork and I have built my coaching practice. Having this understanding of, how, this also allows me to know who to market my artwork to, who my target market is, and what direction my next painting or coaching course is going to go in. All stemming from how I want to intend my work to come out into the world. Most importantly, it has allowed me to become my own type of artist and my own type of business person. Like my painting here expresses, the most important number is the number one. Because when we have an understanding of who we are, what we represent, and what we're capable of, we can combine this with the bare minimum of liking ourselves. We become unstoppable and we have more growth and potential within our, creati our creativity. And this is actually the first initial step in stepping away from fear, is knowing your intention of why you're even creating. Following knowing our intention is really to begin our own creative uh, purpose. This is a powerful shift that takes us from what we intend to do to what we are meant to do. So if I asked you why you create, just think of what that answer would be. And then it would be, in coaching, we dive deeper to find out the why beneath the why. And it is from this place that is true, the true purpose of why you want to create. The basis of fear comes from, sorry, the basis of fear is to keep us alert to potential harm or danger. And one of the reasons that many people live in a state of fear is from not knowing. So this is again why it becomes so important for us to understand ourselves, because that takes that potential fear away from us ourselves. I just wanted to read a little caption from my book that is pertaining to the painting that's showing in this slide. This painting was titled Purpose. So, to live with purpose is to feel determined to achieve something. It is as if each breath you draw is not just for the pure need to sustain life, but it is required to set up the future moments to unfold. When we are not living each moment with purpose, we just go through the motions of living. To live with purpose is not about advancing or focusing on what you need for personal gain. It is about living each moment for the greater good. And by making a difference within ourselves and helping our others grace our lives, we will succeed more than we ever could imagine. Living this way will allow us to have joy, love, and a meaningful life. The second step in moving away from fear is to identify and become aware of what makes you special, what makes you unique. When we understand we have something unique to offer to others, we can begin to allow that part to come out so that we can share it with the world. When I first shared with artists that I was just going to be focusing on the life of the sea turtle, they looked at me like I was absolutely crazy to limit my focus to that. Instead of second-guessing myself, I actually had a little bit of an inner laugh. Because first off, they didn't realize how determined I can be once I make up my mind. And second of all, they couldn't see the broader focus that I could with actually becoming so focused within my artwork. Since that time, I've created over 60 to 70 sea turtle paintings. I've aligned with conservation groups all over the globe. I've spoken at schools actually across the province. I've spoken at galleries of how to use your artwork for something more than just hanging on a wall. I have also spoken in many groups just like this, being able to share what I do to try and inspire others. Being aware of what makes me unique has allowed me to understand that I can offer something that no one else can. When many other people see the success of an artist, they think it can be easily theirs if they just copy it. 
But here's the catch. A lot aren't successful, and the reason why is because they didn't have the initial intention of the first artist or the purpose that that artist had. And so they don't end up with the same results. A bit of my backstory, when a lot of um, other people find out that I work with conservation groups, they think it's really easy just to quickly get a conservation group to support your artwork. But here's a bit of a story. I first decided to approach conservation groups when I was on a cruise with my family. I had already painted a handful of sea turtle paintings and I wanted to do more for this animal. My degree, my initial degree, was actually a Bachelor of Science in Animal Behavior through the Psychology Department. I realized by picking up a random book that I did on that cruise boat how endangered these animals were, and then this became my reasoning. I knew that I could possibly use my artwork to raise money. I can't actually help the animal, but it's possible I could support those who were supporting them. The first conservation group I approached, I offered them 100% of the profits from my artwork. And out of all of these conservation groups, none of them took me up on it. So I, at first I thought it was a failure. I thought, no, I'm gonna try again. I approached another conservation groups and I did a profit sharing. And each and every one of them took me up on working with me. And what this valuable lesson taught me was to know my own value within my work. The reason why people can't take what we do and copy it and have the same results is that each and every one of us claims a certain spot in this world for ourselves. And that spot's already taken. We need to create our own sections within the world when we want to um, promote our work. The next step in really moving away from fear is creating a plan. Creativity is a flowing process. Even for this talk today, when I was asked to do it a few months ago, I needed to come up with a title right away. And I couldn't come up with a title until I had an understanding of what I was going to even talk about. Once I had a bit of an understanding of the message I wanted to share, I could then create a plan of how to deliver it. The plan you come up with for your creative purpose could be the type of focus you want within your artwork. It could also be where are you going to display it? Is it just going to be for your family, just your close family within your home? Are you going to share it with family and friends in their homes? Are you going to share it at the next stage, which is in local areas, local galleries, local art um, shows? Or are you going to try and change and contribute to the field and take it internationally? The plan doesn't need to be accurate. All it needs to know is where you would hope to go and where the next step is. And I just want to share the difference between a hope and a wish. A hope is actually an action word. It is what is a plan. You are working towards something, whereas a wish is just where you put it out and you do nothing. So the whole part of making a plan is knowing where you're hoping to go and realizing that that end result could change at any time. The final thing I want to mention is to not take it so seriously. The important thing to realize is that our higher joy is the more creative we will be. The greatest form of grace that we can offer ourselves is the gift of laughter. We will not always be successful. We will not always get it right. And we are almost always guaranteed to make mistakes, have errors and failures. And if we are experiencing this, then we need to rejoice because that's exactly what we need to do as creators. We are getting out of our comfort zone. We are pushing the limits. And we are making a path for others to know there's other opportunities out there. And this is the space we want to create from. When I first, um, there was a little a while ago, I was looking at some of my artwork and I started to realize it all looked like um, stop and emotion uh, filming kind of for my sea turtles. If you would have flipped all my paintings together, they were just a slight motion off from the next. And I started to poke fun at myself a little bit. And what I really needed to realize is I had to take a step back, reconnect with my intention, rediscover what my purpose was for creating, and then create a new plan. As humans, we get every breath to take a new chance at a new path, a new purpose, and a new set of actions. We are graced with the ability to redefine ourselves in any moment. 
and it is through the celebration of our successes and our failures that we leave fear behind as we honor where we are going and what we are capable of. It is a beautiful space to be a creator because even in our failures, we do find our greatest, our greatest successes. I wanna thank everyone for sitting and listening to me today and allowing me to share how to step away from your fear into your creative power. And if there's anything anyone would like to talk to me about more, please come up to me in the conference or you can connect with me on my social media platforms. Thank you.